Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm doing my Voskovike experiment, half pressurized, half unpressurized with Voskovike yeast uh, by Lelamond. It's a dry yeast. Um, so I have eight gallons in here and it seems like way too much. Um, it's just my tap water. Uh, no additions, no nothing. Gonna do it real simple like. And I'm gonna start heating this because it's gonna take forever and it is cold. It's not cold outside, it's cold in here. I don't know why I'm wearing a sweater. All right, I'm gonna get this started. Had to pop in here. If you guys are looking for the recipe or any equipment links, they are all in the description. Just click show more or something or other. I don't know how to use YouTube personally. Jenny is joining me for this video. So as per the usual, there is a ton of bloopers. So stick around for that. Basically the idea of this beer is we're only doing a Zaka. We're doing a really simple grain bill, just some Pilsner Munich and Caramel 10 because Pilsner is all I got and I like the other things. So let's get started. All right, while Jenny is picking us up some lunch, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out the grain. Guess I should open up my app so I actually know what I'm doing. So we are going to put in 14 pounds of Pilsner malt, one pound of Munich, and one pound of Caramel 10. And that means it is 6.35 kilograms of Pilsner malt, 454 grams of caramel malt, and 454 grams of Munich malt. And I'm going to mill this super fine. Okay, so let's get started with our smaller additions. So this is some caramel 10. Oh, and guys, the grain bill's so high because we're doing a nine gallon batch. Um, so we're gonna split this one up. Um, and, you know, when you split things up, you obviously need more grain. Um, so I'm gonna do half and ferment it under pressure. And then the other half, I'm going to not ferment it under pressure. Kind of a brewlosophy experiment, if you will, except not scientific in any way. All right, our Munich. That was like a pound exactly. And Pilsner. I have like all of half a pound of Pilsner left, which is great. Okay, so I'm gonna set this to be very fine. It is less than a credit card's width. I actually, I'm gonna decrease it a bit. It's as low as it can go. I'm gonna run it through one more time, at least the top portion. That's some fine grist. All right, I'm gonna wait to mash in until Jenny gets here, but I think we're close to temp. Okay, so for as quickly as Jenny talks, it takes her a while to leave her house. So I've gotta mash in unless I wanna be brewing until like six which I don't, so we're gonna mash it. So first things first, the highly necessary screen. All right, so this is at 156 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on first. This guy doesn't fit great because it's meant for when you're doing electric, obviously, but it's good enough for our purposes. All right, let's mash in. I'm gonna do this incrementally. There's a high probability that this is gonna be like as much grain as I can possibly fit in here with eight gallons of water. Yeah, I'm not gonna do this much grain and this much water again. This is like crazy. And I'm just imagining having to get this out now. It does not seem possible. Anyway, we'll figure that out when it comes. All right, so I'm gonna set a timer for 45 minutes and let this guy sit. Okay, so it's been a long ass time. It has not been 45 minutes. It has been like 
an hour and a half. That's my fault because I was supposed to bring tacos and they were very delayed tacos. They're very aware because I mentioned it in the previous clip. They were really good tacos. They were very good. If you are in the Los Angeles area, me Ranchito Veracruz in North Hollywood. Delicious. There you go. Okay, so this is at 146 still. Um, we're actually going to sparge this. How the fuck are we going to do this? All tell, right. Tell me, like, legit, actually tell me what is happening. So you're going to lift this out You've got to lift this up and put these under it. Okay. But it's going to stay on this. So you're pouring. Let me just gonna see how heavy this is. It's pretty fucking heavy. Um, if you could feed these in, I was gonna say, I'm you actually going to go get a step stool. This is my first actual doing the brewing here at the new house. I've gotten to do the drinking at the new house, but I haven't actually gotten to brew yet. There's so much room for activities. Do you want me to lift and you put this on since you know how to do it, or you want me to do it? Um, I think I should lift. That's how bad my upper arm strength is right now. Um, I'm just way more used to it. Once I start punching stuff, I'm really looking forward to that. That's such a gift. Okay, I'm gonna let it drain a little bit. How does as this? Go. Um, so it goes like this. You're gonna have to go like this and then turn it once I'm. And this goes underneath the bottom. That's right. Yeah. I was thinking. Yeah, I remember. Actually, this is easy. Okay, go now. <laughs> this one up. Man, that's some core strength. Go. Sick. That was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. No, it wasn't. She's just that strong. No, I'm not. It was just leverage. Okay, so now we do our sparge. So we're gonna sparge at, our water's gonna be 168 degrees, and we're just gonna throw my brand new colander on top of this and pour water in it. Do you want me to go so, check the water? I'm gonna go get it. All right. Hot pot coming in. Literal colander. Why are we colandering the water? Um, because it will kind of set, it'll distribute. Yeah, got it. I also don't know how to use this colander. Let me see. It's like a pop out. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Okay, so yeah, it'll just sprinkle it. They, you mainly, here, you can actually just pour it on. I didn't wanna just do this forward. at the same time and boil each other. I don't want to splash you. Yeah. Not it that you probably get splashed with hot water all the time. It's just going to rinse the grain and it's going to increase our volume. It's so funny that after whatever, I guess when you did your brew teaching me, thinking about the process, like the way that I remembered it, thinking about it like tea and how the flavor changes with tea. If you oversteep, doing it the right amount of time, chilling it, like, yeah, has helped me understand. Like this makes sense when I think about it like that. I mean, this technically you're supposed to sparge much slower, but like I don't do it for the efficiency. I'm just doing it to add water to the. Um, do you, what difference do you think that pot. makes? Um, well, when you do it slow, it's supposed to like actually properly rinse it and shit. But um, I don't care. So it's just draining in there, and then hopefully we have nine gallons. It smells when we're done. Like a brewery. It smells like that really weedy, healthy bread with all the like seeds and stuff on the outside. Uh, Multigrain? Yeah, but like with flax seeds and stuff. I almost bought rye bread the other day and, I was, and then I found my rye there in the cabinet and I was like, oh, that was a good beer. Rye bread, good little Jewish girl, I'm rubbing off on you. I know. So the only you? issue I see happening is that our liquid is like pretty much almost at the bottom of this. So you might just have to add some more water. Like we basically have to get it up to nine gallons. We can literally just add more water. This was just. It'll overflow if you add more at this point, if the thingy's in there, right? Yeah. It's fine though. Um, I'm gonna pull this and just stick it in this guy. I'm actually wondering if these fit on there. I have more. Do you have clean uh, paint buckets? That's clean enough. It, I just milled the green. Will you pull those guys and then put them on the green thing? It is heavy. Cool. Oh my God, that's so perfect. So you can just pour through and then pour that into there? Yeah. Okay, I'll go refill water. Um, yeah, we need like another gallon. Um, I'm gonna turn on the heat though. So currently our pre boil gravity is one point, or well, it's 13 bricks. So I'm gonna see what that means. Remind me again what gravity is. Um, gravity is how much sugar is in it. So Quebec, is gonna be kind of pilsnery, really crisp. Like a bike. Kvike. Kvike? That's what it's called. If I remember correctly, is like crisp and light, right? 
You can do like anything with kvike. What does this it mean? is the Voss kvike. Um, it's like a Norwegian yeast, but it can get fermented really hot. So I might turn a heater on in there. Don't tell him. How hot does it get in there if you just don't have the air on? Last week it got to like 90. You want it hotter in there? The front, the like ideal fermenting temperature is 95 to like 105. How hot is it getting next week? It's Ooh. supposed to be warmer. Last week it only got up to what, like 80? I think it's only probably gonna get up to 80 as well. Dude, it's almost June, that's crazy. I know. Um, so flavor-wise, they're a little all over the board, but it's the yeast that calls it a kvike. Yeah, like you can do kvike lagers and shit. Oh, you can't, okay, so it's the yeast. And then Yakima hops are, the, they're not the citrusy ones. What's the flavor? We're doing a zaka. A zaka, not Yakima. What do those taste like? It's I'm like out I, of vocabulary. I really don't remember. I'm just using them to get rid of space in my freezer. <laughs> Listen, that's been successful so far. Oh my gosh. Okay, I was doing something. Okay, so our pre-boil gravity currently is 1.054. We're supposed to be at 1.052. Oh, so, so we're going to add what is coming out of this, and then we're going to add some more water, and I think we'll be set. Water's on boil. Grazie mille. Do you need 9,000 dog treats? Yeah. <laughs> we can make some. Really? Yeah. All right. We could have boiled it on the grill. No. I don't want my pans to be gross. Don't you have a burner? Oh, I do. <laughs> I've never Silly used girl. it. So now we're at eight and a half gallons. And I have a bent mash paddle. So it's a, it's a tad above 13 right now. So once we add a half gallon of water, we should be totally set. We're gonna have to watch this pretty well, just so it doesn't um, boil over. Either this went further than the last time or your hands are made of Teflon. Because these handles- No, I only had it at 156. Do you wanna see if this is too hot? Here, just put it down, this is stainless. I got it. Give me, give me this though. Oh, I can pour it in. I just didn't know if you wanted to. I don't want you to possibly burn yourself and you don't have close to a shoes on. And I didn't even think about that. This doesn't pour well. Well, yes it does. There's a secret to that. No, it's done. Oh. That's it. If ever you need to do that, aim for the for far side um, of the thingy. Yeah. All right. Damn it. Ooh, you got, shut up. I still have that one too. Jesus Christ, here. Yeah. No, I just won't do it again. I'm not that dumb. Okay. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> I will, I would do it again. All right, so now we're pretty much smack dab at 12.8. Here, you wanna see? Yeah, do you need to like, pull out any of the little floaters or is that okay? They're gonna be fine, but I wish you wouldn't have said anything about them. There's like one. There's a few, I don't know how. Oh, it's from the spoon, I think. That's fine. Gravity, stay the hell away from me. 15, 14, 12. So that's 12 point. I'm calling it 12.8. Eight? Yeah, that's what I was gonna yeah. say. That actually gets us right to 1.053, so we basically hit it perfectly. Sick. Sick. Okay, so 1.053, our boil volume is nine gallons. All right, so now we just got to wait for boil. This to boil. And we gotta, we gotta be pretty careful about watching it. Okay. So that means I should go get my beer? Yeah. Cause I broke I'm the gonna... rules and I started drinking a beer before the brew was done. I know, so did It's I. your fault you handed it to me. Sorry, they went with tacos. They do. I think it's a sin if you do tacos without beer. I know, it was like, what are we even doing? What are we even doing? All right, we'll see you guys back here when we are boiling, mainly just to show you how much of a mess it makes. That's we great. need two ounces in each jar. Did you tear, did you hit there? Yeah. Um, <coughs> so the hop fill for this is two ounces of Azaka whole cone in the 20 minute mark and two ounces in the five minute mark. Let me smell it. I have no idea what Azaka smells like. I think like. it smells like a Chinese restaurant. Ooh, it's good. Oh, weird. It's like lemongrass. That's what it is. It's Thai. Come on. It's gonna fill the whole jar. I can't see the numbers, so I'm listening to you. Wait, hold up. Okay, yeah. 
You've got a long ways to go, Missy. You're at half an ounce. So I should have gotten bigger mason jars. Well, or you just pour it in one ounce at a time. All right, I'll get the bigger mason jar. You keep doing Here, that. Here, you're at one even. All right, now fill the other one with one, and then I'm gonna get one that'll Coming fit to the to other you. side so I can actually see the scale. That would make more sense. I don't know if she has two more ounces. Sarah, I don't think you're gonna have two more ounces. I have pellets we can use. I think you're gonna have like one more ounce. Okay. You said you need four total? Yeah. I thought there was four because I definitely measured it earlier. Maybe it's just squished down at the bottom. Maybe. But. Well, I measured the whole bag, so. It was like four and a half when I measured the whole bag. So we're gonna do half. So basically, um, we're gonna do this guy in our 20 minute edition. Um, and I'm just gonna add half an ounce of pellets. Um, we've got 1.1 ounces of the whole cone, but you know what? Guys, nothing matters. We're all gonna die while drinking beer. Come watch some television. Also, based on the way that this smells, if you, this is not one that like, if you over hopped, it would be undrinkable. Like it, it's nah, not crazy. The hop bill is very low. It's a pale ale, so. Oh, well, right, but even with pale ales, like, yeah, I don't, I don't like when they're too yeah, hoppy, but this no. one, I feel like the this flavor is going to be, be so good. This one's going to be low. Our, our IBUs are like 45. And this one's going to, the style is going to be, it's a pale ale. But with the Kvike, that doesn't change the texture. Nah, it's just pale ale. Okay, fuck it. We're done? All right. Peace out, y'all. It's beer. All right, it has boiled for 40 minutes, and Jenny's going to add our first hop edition. That's me. That is Jenny. So we'll go ahead and Jenny Hopplestein. do this, this, and I'm going to go grab a Wurflock tablet. She really trusts me with the heavy lifting. Yep. It smells so good. It also kind of smells like pickles unless you pickled something in this glass. Maybe. <laughs> Smell it. Not that one. Only one. Oh, shit. You're only supposed to do that one. Did you say only the purple one? Yeah, I handed it to you because that was the only one. Oh, All right. I tried to be proactive. That's fine. All right, Wurflock tablet goes in the center. Which is the anti... It's a clarifier. clarifier. And then throw that in. And then I'm gonna just tie this to the edge. Let me push it under? Yeah. Okay, so um, we're also gonna throw in the chiller. <coughs> In 15 minutes, we're gonna add our second hop addition to the same bag, Jenny, for a future reference. Same bag? I can grab another Just a one. big old wet sack. All right, we'll <laughs> do a different big old wet sack. How about rather, that? Yeah, rather than messing with boiling stuff, wouldn't that be safer? I guess, yeah. Fine, fine, safety officer Jenny. Some of us have already burned ourselves twice in the last couple weeks. <laughs> okay, see you in 15 minutes. I attached the hoses for the chiller. We've only got five minutes left. Jenny is doing her best to get all those hops in a bag. And, and now we're going gonna, in? We're gonna dunk. Dunk it. And go ahead and grab a spoon for that. Um, so we're gonna use um, my Keg King fermenter, the hey, Semnos hey. ones, and another smaller one that I don't know the name of. Um, but the smaller one, we're not gonna pressure, we're not gonna do pressurize. The larger one, we are. And we're gonna kind of determine. Damn, that good. We're gonna try to see if we can tell the difference between a pressurized ferment and a non pressurized ferment. That basically. sounds like a taste test. It is gonna be a taste test. My favorite kind of test. I guess I should set a timer. How come this one won't stay under? Because it needs your help. I mean... It's because the other one had some pellets. Oh. So just keep mushing it. She mushed. That lady is mushed. She's buoyant. Buoyant. It smells good. I it really like... It smells lemon I love the smell of those hops. I really do. Yeah, that's really nice. I think this is going to be a good summer beer. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, it's so interesting. Like usually even when you get like the pine or the citrus or the grapefruit or whatever, you, you can still... I feel like I never smell it this pronounced in the boil. But it usually still smells, you smell the bitterness. This one is just like, 
green and lemongrass and fresh. The funny thing is these are old ass hops. These have been in my freezer for a long time. All right guys, I'm gonna call this good. I'm gonna throw on my lid. Just to prevent any buggos and kill my heat. And start my chiller. And we're gonna just drop this down to like 90 degrees and pitch our uh, yeast. Here's a hot tip, if you stir your um, wort, it will chill faster. So I'm gonna do that so I don't cool down my pool on accident. Okay, so now I'm gonna transfer this. We're just below eight gallons and I gotta grab, grab my hose. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is fill the snub nose guy. Hey Jenny, will you just empty this out? Um, so I'm gonna fill this until there's two gallons left in here. So while we're doing this, I'm gonna um, take a final gra or a original gravity reading. Let's see where we got. All right, so our original gravity is 13.8. Okay, so 13.8 means our gravity is 1.058. Let's see what we were trying to hit, because I have no idea. So we beat our, our original gravity by like 0 0.003, which is fine and dandy. We did have a little bit less volume, so I think honestly if we had eight gallons we would have hit it perfectly. I don't care enough to add some more water. It's gonna be fine, guys. It's an experiment. So our ABV is looking like it's supposed to be 5.8% now, which is good responsible pale ale. Uh, will someone divide 11 by eight? And then multiply that by... And then multiply that by five. 6.875. Wait, 11 by 8? No, 11 divided by 8 is 1.375. Oh, I Times five is 6.875. I heard three, so. Okay, so we're gonna need almost seven grams of yeast in this big boy, and then we're gonna do. Seven grams? And then we're gonna do three grams in the little boy. And I'm gonna try my hardest, but this is not scientific in any fashion, so. I don't care, I don't wanna hear about it. All right, so this guy's good to go. And I'm gonna throw my spunding valve on here in a second while the rest of it drains in here. So these are all set. We've got maybe, probably close to like a gallon and a half in here and five and a half in here, probably six in here. Um, so they've got their yeast in them. We got a spunning valve on this. We're gonna ferment it at 15 PSI. This guy is going to just have an airlock on that I'm going to add now. Actually, I think I can just add one in there. Actually, I bet that. Mm. Anyway, I digress. Thanks for watching. Check out the review. That'll be the next video. We'll see you guys next time. Drink half the keg. And drink half the keg. I have a Patreon and a podcast, so check like those me. out. It's called. She's great. You should like her. It's called Brewing After Hours. Bye. <laughs> I want to thank my newest patron member, Clarence Reed. Thanks so much for your support. Making beer is fun. Remember. No, it's me, not. Do you want me to record? Yes, please. This sir. is where the outtakes start. All right, rolling. Have a fun day. You have a fun day. You have a fun day. <laughs> we might actually need your help. You should be nicer. <laughs> I love you. Is everyone's phones on silent? Jenny, your phone's over here? Probably not. No, it's, it's fine. Thank it's okay. you. It's all okay, guys. It's fine. You know why it's fine? Because it's just fucking beer. Because you know what happens at the end of brewing beer. You get to drink beer.
Do you feel like the cat problem has been solved? No, no. Not in any remote. You got a lot consideration of consideration. You got of what a lot of dog pee and stuff. I don't know how to help you. We got that little thing that goes off at night. Like it's a motion sensor and it does a high frequency and I think it's helping, but I can't fully tell. But dude, it's like in the house, it's in the floors, it's in the fucking closets, it's in fucking the vanities, it's everywhere. <laughs> All right, so we're if, gonna. <laughs> if anyone has any any uh, trade, I've you know, already secret, asked. Um, I've no. already asked, and like I'm, do I've done everything. I've done everything. I, I need will to ask. like literally just kills my entire house. Remember when I said we don't trust used memory cards? Remember when I said I'm busy? Remember when Mermel Mermel? I murmel all the time. You remember when Mermel Mermel? Do you remember? All right, we're just gonna go ahead and do it. When the Mermel was mermed, all the merm time. I'm really happy merm that's time. on the cam, but on the camera. So go? Yeah. Wait, don't throw shit at me. Don't. I'll merm you out. I'm gonna merm you. You'll merm out for you later. You're marmaling so hard right now. <laughs> so. Whatever the chemical compound is that's making it smell like this, I like. It's probably. Love. Like, probably love. It's love. Um, but it's probably something that's similar to like citronella. Um, because like citronella is, is, is like kind of an essential oil. But there's like a bunch of different essential oily stuff in the hops. Makes sense. I mean, if you think about what plant family it is, the concept of oils coming off of that plant is pretty yeah. easy to comprehend. This is the lemon kush of... <laughs> lemon meringue. I don't know any of the weed names. Tasty one? I don't know if lemon meringue is a thing. I just I know there's birthday cake or something. That's what I was... And thinking. there's like peanut butter chunky or something. We always get that I one. Know. I can't remember. Pe peanut butter... Pe Unicorn pie. I don't know. There's probably, like, no matter what you say, there's probably a weed name for it. Yeah. Because, like, they're, everyone has a different name for the same shit. And state by state now, they have to grow them stateside, so I don't know if they're growing the same strains or creating their own. I don't know, man. Who, what celebrity just did their own? There's a rapper that did his own. Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart? There's another one that, like, another rapper got into the weed game. I can't remember who. No, I don't know. You just gotta get the siphon going. Can you believe people did slash do that with gasoline? At least an old like Western movie or old like Jenny, I have done that with gasoline out of my father's Corvette because that's how we filled up our lawnmower. I did that every weekend growing up. What does gasoline taste like? I don't remember. Because I really like the smell, but I don't think I want to taste it. Ew, I hate the smell. I love it. You have a reason to hate it. You've ingested it. I haven't like ingested it, but like you definitely make the siphon with your mouth. Just 